to the space center. It was about an hour from the hotel, so it's a nice and easy drive. Um, and then we are just parked up in number third, Shira. And then it was 10 miles to park, that was easy. And we'd already bought our tickets online, so we're just walking up to the main door now. I didn't see too much that was different online when I looked. Um, but one thing that I might do today with the kids is the bus tour because we haven't done it in years or I haven't done it in years and I don't know that the kids have ever done it um, so that I believe is included with the revision anyway so that would be great to see we'll obviously the Atlantis to have a good wander around Look how 
place you are to the nose of it. So we're about to go onto the simulator. The Red Planet Simulator. Um, the height was 13 inches and my understanding is it moves, it vibrates, there's noises, no spinning or anything like that, like those are at the park. So we're at the hollow, so I don't want to say it's really too want to go on anything or do anything. So we're just hoping the line will go quick enough to get us through. But at the minute we're still stood next to this Falcon 9, which had I had a little bit more of a second to read before I said that before. <laughs> I would have said that this is the one that I have seen. But I've been pulled from pillar to post this morning um, by a little monster. So one of those days, hopefully the space and the rockets will entertain him enough to maybe just relax and enjoy it a little bit. So on this simulator I have four options, Uncharted Worlds, Daring Explorers, Red Planet that we're going to do, and then Cosmic Wonders. Wait time is about 20 minutes, so we are just in line at the minute. I've just been stood looking at this Falcon 9 because it's, it's wild to see the one you actually sat at the other facility the, where the buses take you out to is where you would watch the launch from. That's the closest distance to the launch pad. Um, and it's wild because it's just such a big experience to watch. And looking at this, I'm kind of like, it's smaller than I thought it would be in a weird way. It's still incredible. But it's funny to be so close to it. So that ride is kind of like simulated chairs. Um, so you're in rows of three, um, portioned in three, and there's an upper and a lower level. So perfect for those who have accessibility issues. And you have a choice of the different options. We went to Mars and it was amazing. It was such a good mix of fun ride mixed with educational information about what's going on in the quest for Mars and what they could do with Mars and kind of like a, how they'd hope it to be one day, but then some of it is stuff that they are designing now. So it was really cool, really interesting. Uh, you can't, your chairs do move, but not loads. Uh, nothing like Mission Space if you've ever done that in that part, not even like the green one. It's just very, very mild. Um, so it was super cool. So we are just gonna head towards the shop because someone's driving me insane about the shop. And then when we've been in there, we're going to grab some lunch. I think we'll probably then go to Atlantis and then go and do the bus tour. So my advice for you is the minute you get in, go straight to the gateway. I used to say go straight to Atlantis, but now I say go straight to the gateway. Because that ride, when we got in the line, was 20 minutes and it was 45 as I walked out. Go so, see. Really cool. So we are at the shop. So we're just going to go in. This Oh, this store is normally really, really cool. We're just gonna have a look around in general, okay? All the decorations. Oh my goodness! What the hell, babe? How many? Two. Oh my goodness! And my nose. Oh, this me is an astronaut. I know. Okay, so we just went to the store and bought a lot. <laughs> I always do when I'm here. I always say it's one of the places where I will let like, the kids go wild and buy, like I always like the t-shirts, the sweaters, the kids have got hats, we've got magnets, we've got presents for people. So it's a little bit different to a Disney haul. It's one that I will fully endorse. Um, so as we were in there as well, we noticed that there was a it's suddenly getting very busy where I am. Um, an autograph station. I'm sorry. And in there was no handle to open the door. Was, um, so it sounds like you can only a sign saying autographs with Charlie Walker, who is the astronaut who is here today. 
And so when we stood there, I could see the time. I was like, kids, let's just hang out. And he walked past in his suit, space suit. Um, well, obviously not like a fully fledged space suit, <laughs> just the one that they wear when they're uh, kind of doing their duties on Earth. Um, and he stopped and said, oh, good morning to both of the kids. And they both just went, because they realised that he was the astronaut that was here today doing the talks and that, that was a real live astronaut that had been to space talking to them. Even I was like, oh my god, fangirling for a moment. He was just so sweet. There's something about astronauts. I've, as I was saying before, I've been here and watched a talk with Al Warden, who was one of the final Apollo astronauts that was alive at that point um, when I watched this talk and he said something in his demeanour which they all seemed to have some form of uh, charisma and um, it's needless to say Charlie Walker still, still got it super cute moment super cute moment so we then just went to the um, Orbit Cafe. I always remember it being really good and it was amazing. Honestly, it was the best burger I've eaten in the last three weeks. <clears throat> Four weeks. I had that. The kids had a burger and a chicken nuggets or chicken tenders. It's about 47 bucks, so it's a little bit cheaper than you'd get at Disney. Even the gift store, we got an absolute haul. Definitely less than we would have spent if we were in Disney. So it is kind of a little bit better if you're wanting to do something fun without the prices. The Disney prices. Yeah, that's where the bus is. So there you go, there's a clue what we're doing next. We're going on the bus tour. The lady in the store was amazing and that she told us that she's going to do this, go and do that. So she kind of said, You want to go and see? I've, I've done this bus tour before a good few times, but she was like, I said, Should we do Atlantis first? That's the case. And she kind of said, I would do the bus tour first because it drops off at the Atlantis building. So when you come back, you're right there. And then you've done it and she was like and there's a bit of moon rock that most people miss make sure you don't find that she gave us loads of tips she's absolutely brilliant so <clears throat> we uh have lots of tips and tricks in our backpack now to go and do this bus tour so i'm super excited very much into it but this is like me fully geeking out this is <laughs> my happy place <laughs> So you can buy some drinks, but there is uh, also a restaurant where we're going to. So just, it's very cool this is. So the kids are modelling their new gear. Arlo, oh, show me your hat. And your necklace. What's on your necklace, then? Oh, and that's the Sienna. Show me your hat. She got the necklace in pink as well. This is somewhere I will always buy like jumpers and t-shirts for myself because I am that cool. I just love it. I've got so, I've had NASA jumpers for years that I still wear now, so I got a couple of cute new ones. Um, they were about $55 plus tax, so less than you would probably spend in Disney for a jumper. It's kind of on the level of a spirit jersey. Um, but yeah, it was, the, the store was really, really good. It was magnets, all the good stuff. So now, off we go. part of lunch and you can see we uh some of the workers they've got part of the doors open on high base two and four as we roll by you can actually kind of look inside the lower part and uh 
see that nothing is permanent inside. Everything is movable as they need to move things around when assembling the rockets. Also the mobile launcher, they were talking about the, the crew member access arm. As we get closer, you'll be able to see that actually sticking out on the side. That is the same mobile launcher that did launch the space launch system in November. So they had to do some repairs and they're getting it ready for the future Artemis launches. But there is the crew member access arm they were talking about. You can see it sticking out to the side. And then our crawler transporters on the side here, the right side. Crawler transporter two is our heavy lifter. Usually the mobile launchers parked inside the vehicle assembly building, but they've been working on it the last few months. Thank you. Five, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic. Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Here shortly inside the building. They launch from there along with 82 shuttles. And now SpaceX, they launch their Falcon Heavies and their crewed missions from the across the water. And there is 39B. It's got the four towers, which are called lightning mitigation towers. flying through space. Every week on TV, I'd watch my heroes as they jumped into their rocket ships and took to the stars. And I wanted to be like them. They had courage, imagination, and no problem ever stood in their way for long. And on the end, when we actually did send men into space, it turned out that those were exactly the qualities it took. I'm John Hudson. This is Pad 39 of the Kennedy Space Center. I was a launch controller here when from this very spot, man took off to fly to the moon. It was a journey that began 12 years before that rocket ever left the ground. And it started on the other side of the world. This is the firing room, launch control for the Apollo missions. This is not a mock-up. These are the very consoles we sat at when men first took off to fly to the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 had put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big leap, and we were doing it with a rocket that no man had ever flown before. It was a few days before Christmas, 1968, when Apollo 8 sat on the bed. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8, right here where it actually happened. Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments when history is not being made, destiny is being embraced.
ready, Victor. You're up to it. It's exciting for Yeah, it's real. Hey, it's a real, real one. Yeah. Really good. It's pretty cool. What do you think of those thrusters? <laughs> They're pretty big, huh? They're just walking under the belly of the satin thigh. If you will. I know. You want to come and see these outfits? They're pretty cool. No. That's okay. Where well, you can line up, line up and put on a suit and then you can stand and they take your picture. Does it look funny? You'll have to go in there as well. You can see it and then it goes into the third stage. You look up. Yep. We'll come back and see all these rovers and um, outfits. You know what this is? What do you think this would be? What do you think this could be? Do you think it could be the lunar module? That they went to the moon on? Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> oh, my. I don't know, maybe. Can we touch them? This is a mock up of when they landed. Look, let's go have a look around. I can see the moon rock that you can actually touch. We'll go see that in a second. And there's your final bit. Yes, you can touch it. Oh, you can touch it. It's one of the vans. Do you know what this would have done? This would have taken the astronauts to the launch pad. You want to go see the back of it? Look, come see. I want to touch the moon rock. We can touch the moon rock. Can we get in it? Nope. Let's see where your mom up there. Whoa. That's. Did you see this? Oh yes. Yeah. Mommy, that's one of metal. That looks like metal. So this is the piece of Mommy, metal that we were told to go and touch. I'm touching it first. Oh my Ooh. goodness, you two. Hello, let me touch it. No. I'm touching it. <gasps> Only you two could manage to <laughs> really? argue that over moon like rock metal. touching. That feels like metal. Can I touch? Yeah. Put your hand in it. Mommy, can it we does go like metal. Let's go in the moon. Pretty cool. Okay, go leave your footprints on the moon. Walk, quick. I remember reading, I think it was Jean Cran's This Way Dice book, and like the description of the whole situation that happened with that module. It was just chilling. Such a shame. So this is in honour of them. A little bit of information and pictures of their life. So sweet. Look, it's all of their IDs. You see? Oh, 
looks amazing. So clever, such a nice tribute. This is supposed to be their walkway that they went on. Of Apollo 1. Whoa. Do you understand who this is? Yeah. There's like three men. What the this heck? is how it would have been sad. Um, tributes to the other disasters that have happened to the Challenger um, but that was a really cool one that was really nice just to like throw back to the beginnings of space and kind of whoa buddy and just kind of explain a bit about them and their families and then see how they would have been sat in the module when the disaster struck so that was really cool that was a really nice thing for them to do where do you see this space suit? I always remember this bit. Look the boots. They took the boots? Oh, I do too, yeah. And all the dust of the suit as well. So this is the space helmet, originally. So this space suit was made for Jean Sernan, which is pretty cool. Very lucky. Wait, are they actually the real shoes? I believe so. And then you've got your Lunar Rover. This is... I don't know what Jean Sernan would have driven to wrap the flag of the one that they actually put on the moon which is pretty cool you see you see Apollo 14 capsule that's pretty cool isn't it so that was from 1971. Then she came down in that then. The gloves. They were used by Buzz Aldrin to train for the Apollo 11 mission. Pretty cool, isn't it? Look how big those gloves are. It's all different things. You know, surface maps. Oh, it's Roger Sheffy's watch. Because the battery is dead. Alan Shepard's suit. You know who Alan Shepard is? First American in space. Look, these are all the different suits that people made for going out into space. We're going to head out of these doors at the back. And we are going to go to where the bleachers are because I want to show the kids the launch pads. Although at this point, this trip is very much for me. <laughs> the pair of them have uh, begun to get a bit ratty. So we're going to head out there, see if we can see. It's a clear day, so we should be able to see the launch pads quite easily and then we're going to go and get back on the bus and head back and go see the Atlantis. This command module you can actually, there's a window at the top you can actually go and look at how it would look. If you come out of these doors, thank you, there is the assembly building in the background and there's a little garden with some statues over there and we're just going to see if we can see the launch pads. 
Yeah, buddy. So here is a, ble a bleacher, one of the bleachers where you can watch a lawn, Charles. Yeah? So we have sat on, not these ones, the ones on the other side of these trees to watch that balcony line go off. This one is 39B. And then if you come around the corner, Mommy, that noise? you'll see 39A. So this Mommy, is where the, it's just crickets, buddy, where the Apollo mission went from. There's another round of bleachers behind these trees, which is where you would actually sit to watch the launches. But you can kind of get the gist of just how far away they're. Three miles away, the launch pads. Yeah, about room. Okay, so that's the bus tour done. All oh, of his favourite bit was seeing the Saturn V, and mine was the firing room, and Sienna's was the rock. I was just reading about the firing room on my way back then because I was like, I knew that that wasn't where the desks were, and that they had been moved. But then when I was looking at it, I was thinking, there's not enough desks. <laughs> so I was reading about it, and I'm right that there used to be four rows. And I think, uh, sorry, nine rows, I think there's only four there. And apparently, uh, somebody had done a guided tour of it, and most of the um, desks actually aren't from that era. So I apologize for spoiler alert there, and probably pushing people's hopes. They are all real desks, they just weren't necessarily from that era. Um, there were apparently a group of them with some found in storage in the VAB. Um, that they gathered together for the exhibition. That's what I read. Do I believe it? It's probably true. <laughs> but I do think some of them are real. And it is set up exactly how it was. And it's a very good experience. I'm, that's my favorite. I think that's fantastic. Really well done. Um, and I think the amount of real artifacts they have here is incredible so who cares if a couple of desks may not be exactly how they say it is in the video into the building we go so in this room you're going to see a show up here about how they designed the atlantis I said it was 12 minutes long and then we're going to go through those doors and you watch the atlantis blast off and then you get the bit that makes me get goosebumps and cry <laughs> you ready you want to reduce the CO2 buildup. You need a better safety margin. The crew can tolerate a short term increase, but. Engineering? Morning, Betty. What, right now? <laughs> building 36? I didn't even know there was a building 36. It must be important. Everyone's here. We have propulsion, aerothermal, flight dynamics. Anyone know why we're here? For this. Good job! That was so high. 
like it is a little, a little high. Just you know, if you're young ones, it's got a height. Definitely don't put them through there. Uh, mine are all fine. They just get a bit fussy here and there a bit, but they're not actually scared of them. So I knew they'd be okay. So they did the space station area and then there is also a slide um, land like the shuttle it says i know so you do different twists and turns to get yourself down and then this is like the descent of all the missions and they get to design them Oh, you have to pick which one your favourite one is, and some of them have even been signed by the actual astronauts. The March 1996, it is pretty cool. I like that one too. Yeah, that one. Can I sign it? Sienna just asked me if she could sign. <laughs> no, that's for the astronauts to sign then. But if you want to be an astronaut, good news. You can sign your own one day. I'll do it. I want to do it. I'm probably too old. Well, I am too old. And not clever enough. But I want to do it. That is the tunnel that the kids just went through. It is pretty high. But it's so cool. So clever the way they've done that. This little area of how to live in space. So there's your bathroom. <laughs> And then here's their eating area. And then this is their bed. Yeah, I was, trying to see, I was asking me last night how they sleep and I said they're basically strapped in. Let's go see that too. Their little duvet section zips up so that they can't float around. Because they're making me go to look down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Move your head, bud. Move your head. <laughs> Ew. He's also telling Arlo about how they work out in space before and that they have a treadmill that they are strapped in. Sky. And then here is the Forever Remembered, which is the other tribute to astronauts, which is really cool. Definitely took a walk through there. Lots of different items of like memorabilia from my memory of the astronauts. And it's from astronauts from Challenger and Columbia which you can see their emblems in the front little tunnel <laughs> I like these orange suits and then there's another astro van here I love this one the grey one the silver one's really cool We went to the launch experience, but it's a height restriction of 44 inches, um, which is wild because Mission Space, the green simulator is a lot less than that, and a lot more intense from my memory of this. I remember thinking this was a little underwhelming, whether they made it better since then. I don't know. That was a, a very, very long time ago, like a long time ago, um, but I'm not too disappointed that we haven't been able to do that having done the, the other one, which I think is more fun than this one. So if that's the case and you have kids that are under 44 inches, then go to the Gateway Experience instead because that was brilliant. Or do Mission Space, the green mission at Epcot. This is a little area where you can play with, working with different parts of the shuttle. And I'm pretty sure, so you can also work at the robotic arm on the Atlantis. The kids are working at docking at the station. Um, and then there's also a bit to land it. So that's pretty cool. Some cool pictures of the training. They did it in the first train. Because simulates how it is to walk across and out in space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
controllers seem to be a little bit, you can have it going down a little bit slow, but it does reset your position and you get three minutes, I believe. Oh, they also decided to have a go this one. I should try going down. Down, yeah. Go left. There you go, Nan. Buddy, why don't you come have a go on this one? So that other people can have a go on that one. There you go, Nan. Go left a tiny bit. There you go. Right a bit, there you go, hold it central. about 10 and it is about 22 quarter to 5 now it's open 936 we could easily have done that but it's just incredibly hot the hottest one i've ever known um out here it's just wild so we went and saw that science show that was absolutely amazing literally brilliant you have to go and see it with the kids it's so good um lots of science experiments the girl doing it was amazing everyone's been amazing that works here to be honest today right from food to buses to people in the stores to you know everyone doing the tours and that kind of thing they've been so good so we've had an absolute blast I've, we've all loved every second of it me more than the kids because it's just my thing but they have really enjoyed it it is just very hot but on a really hot day it is a good one because a lot of the exhibitions are inside which helps but we are going to get on our way i would absolutely advise everybody to come if you are into space and even if you're not into space it would probably get you into it um, we didn't get to do the Mars and we didn't get to the Hall of Fame, but that's just because we've run out of time really and it's time to start heading back because we have an hour's drive. So I am going to head back and uh, get these kids all sorted. We're going to go for a nighttime swim and we will see you later. As always guys, thank you for watching and bearing with us in the madness that is our life. <laughs> we will see you on the next vlog. So don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below and we will see you really soon.